In this video, we're going to take a look under the hood at the syntax of Angular's lazy loading functionality. There's some pretty cool stuff to be learned here, but before we get into it, I just want to mention that if you're looking to really learn all the fundamentals of Angular, you need to come check out my Fundamentals of Angular course. It includes over four hours of hands-on exercises, over 41 of them. Since actually doing hands-on exercises, and by that I don't mean just typing along with somebody else who's typing, but actually hands-on challenges, actually doing them yourself, that's how you really learn things. And that's what we're about here at Thinkster.io. So come check us out, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, I want to talk about the syntax because I think there's some pretty interesting lessons to learn here by digging into the syntax. So what we're talking about here is on line 16. This is the meat and essence and core of how we do lazy loading in Angular. And this syntax has a lot of little pieces that I want to break into and look at. So to start off with, it all happens because of this load children key. So that's what we're going to be looking at is this load children key. This takes in a function. We've got an arrow function here. And the function itself simply calls the import function. Now the first piece of confusion might be that people can assume that the import function is actually part of Angular, and it's not. This import function is actually just a basic part of JavaScript. And if you want to know more about the import function and how it differs from the import statement, then check out the link below for a link to my blog and video on this particular topic. But this import function actually lets us download code. It's different than the import statement. Look up here on line six, we have an import statement you may be pretty comfortable and familiar with that statement, but the import function is different. It dynamically downloads a piece of code. So when this code is executed, the browser will actually go out and download the code that's referenced. The import statement takes this one parameter, a path to the file that we want to download. In this case, this file is a bundle. Angular, when it builds, is actually gonna build up a big module file that includes the module we want to lazy load and any of the pieces of the module that wouldn't already have been downloaded in the basic initial download for the application. So that's what is going to be downloaded and probably the number one place where you might get something wrong and make a mistake is really just in the path to the module. And just knowing that it's relative to the app directory of your application is the key here. So after we feed that path into the import statement, JavaScript's gonna download this bundle file with the entire module in it. And then the import function actually returns a promise. And that's what we see here on the next part of line 16 is we are waiting for the promise to resolve. And then we want to do something with the downloaded code. And that's how the import function works. It downloads something, then the promise resolves, and you can get a handle to the code that was downloaded and do something with it. Here in Angular, what we're doing is we're calling m.watchlistModule. That's the name of the module that's getting downloaded. So the code bundle, this module bundle that's being downloaded, actually has a property that is the module itself. Now due to how we've written the arrow function inside of the then function, what's happening is the module is actually being returned out from the promise. You'll understand this if you understand about how implicit returns work with arrow functions. Essentially what's going on here is, this is the same as if we were to write this code like this. If we were to put curly braces around this function, and let's give this a little bit more formatting so it looks a little bit more like an actual function. If we put curly braces around this, we've now broken this. What actually happens is we've got a return statement here. By not putting in the curly braces, we have an implicit return. That's how arrow functions work. So this code and the original code, let's go back to our original code here, without the curly braces, that's the same thing. So it's like putting in return m.watchlist module, although that gives us an error if we actually try to do that. So that module is actually getting returned out. Angular gets a handle to the module and then processes it, loads it, and now the module acts as if we had it right from the very beginning. The application now has the module, it can work with the module, and deal with it. And this all happens because we hit any kind of a path that has to do with this path that we've specified here in the configuration for this route. So this is watch list. So if we went to just slash watch list or slash watch list slash list or slash watch list slash edit, whatever path we go to, if it starts with watch list, then it's going to trigger this particular path and download the module. So let's just review really quickly the three steps that happen here. First off, we use the load children key, which triggers a function when that route is requested. Then the JavaScript import function downloads the indicated module bundle. 
And after download completes, the promise resolves, and we return the module class in the then function so that Angular can now begin loading and processing the module. And that's how Angular lazy loading works. A lot of little things here, very interesting line of code to really break down and understand what's going on. I hope you learned a lot from this, and check out some of our other videos and our courses.